Hello and welcome to Tushka Training. Today we're going to go over some hints and tips for Hit Film 2 Ultimate. One of the first things people should really get used to is organizing their projects. We're used to naming things on the timeline, but it's also useful to use this button here, the new folder button, or to right click and create a new folder right there. Um, if you look at the way I've organized my composites and my projects, I'm not saying you should organize yours in the same way, but you should organize them. You should get yourself a system that you're happy with and run with. Because if you look at how much is actually inside this particular project, it's unbelievable the amount of stuff that's in here. And it's it's never-ending. There's, there's a list that goes on forever and ever and ever. Um, and it's all organized nicely and hidden because all you need to use really is this one particular composite because it's a finished composite. Um, so that's the first tip for the day is to organize your media browser. Um, it just makes it a lot easier when you're trying to pull shots in onto the editor timeline or if you're trying to make new composites out of the old composites and so on and so forth. The next tip is more in line with Axel's recent tutorial from FX Home, and that is the saving of templates or the saving of composite shots. Um, he did it with uh, text uh, templates, and I don't think people kind of understood how powerful saving composite shots actually is. If you think of the amount of times where you're creating an effect and you're actually using a composite shot within that effect, and then a couple of days later, two weeks later, three weeks later, a year later, you need the exact same effect within another effect. If you've saved that composite shot, you don't have to redo that. Um, one I found that I use quite a lot in a lot of effects is uh, wipes, gradient wipes, um, which you can't actually do with a gradient wipe plugin in HipFilm within a composite shot you can do it on the editor but you can't do it within a composite shot that's not a problem because it's very easy to make gradient wipes very easy to make wipes in hit film itself as a composite shot and then use it uh, in various different ways I'll be another tutorial later coming from us on how to make some gradient wipes um, and some free gradient wipes available on the website eventually. Um, I'm building up a package right now. Um, but to show you the sort of things you can do with gradient wipes, um, these have all been loaded up from my uh, from my gradient wipe folder. Um, if I just go to import composite shot here, there's my gradient folder as it is right now. Um, when you're watching these, by the way, if you notice that the gradient is taking a while to come in, it's because this this project itself is 720p. The gradient wipes are 1080, and I haven't I haven't downgraded them for this tutorial simply because there's no point. You'll still get the idea. So the first thing that you'll do with a gradient wipe is obviously the old classic of of wiping one image to another, which will look something like that. Um, you can do some more creative things like this kind of thing here. Or, I mean, I've, I've created this radar for one of the elements tutorials that will be coming up soon as well. Um, and this uses a, a gradient wipe for the scanner in the middle. Um, so gradient wipes are quite powerful um, all the way through. You'll use them a lot more than, than you think you will. Um, and again, that's saving of composites. Uh, another great use is to use a gradient wipe as a, a displacement map, as shown here. And you can get quite a nice disintegrate effect going on. Or it's the start of a nice disintegrate effect, anyway. So, uh, yeah, gradient wipes are actually uh, very, very good. Uh, there's a little trick with this particular gradient wipe here when you're using it with a, a displacement map. And that is... Um, is uh, we've got this new plane here, which is just a plain black uh, plane. It's used on this grade here with the actual displacement. The displacement itself is using a, um, the, the gradient wipe here, which looks uh, like that. That's actually the gradient wipe there. All right, so we'll turn off the gradient wipe and we'll bring the grade layer back on. 
Now the trick being here is that uh, you use a, a set mat to actually wipe away the object that you're you're uh, disintegrating for one. If you turn that off, then you'll see that the item actually just moves like so. So you use a set mat with the gradient wipe as well, and that actually deletes the object. The other problem is when using this displacement for this kind of technique is that if you actually don't use that straight single plane on a separate displacement using the same exact measurements as you can see here it's got exactly the same pixel amount you will have the item that you've originally put on the screen move down the screen so if you see it there that's the original placement of the item but as soon as you put displacement on it moves it down the screen so the way you get around that is just to copy the displacement again with a black plane and put in the exact same measurements and it'll put it back to its original shape and then you haven't got to worry about transforms and all this sort of stuff and it becomes completely procedural so I can literally put any image in there that's just a standard image there I can put any image in there now and that will actually displace in the position that it was in uh, and as you can see it's actually very effective um, it's a very effective start to a disintegrate effect anyway and there's there's no particles being used, no particle engine, so it's it's quite a, a quick effect as well. It doesn't take much to uh, render it out. So I hope you uh, enjoyed these tips and tricks. Um, we shall have some more for you at some point. Uh, remember to hit subscribe for the YouTube channel, and uh, we'll see you on the next tutorial.